Hello and welcome to Techie Chap. In today's episode, I am installing NetBSD, NetBSD 10 Beta, in fact. So, without further ado, let's crack on. Right, so here we are. This is the NetBSD 10 Beta installation screen. This is the legacy installer that I have downloaded and am setting up on my Dell. So uh, I'm going to be uh, doing the default installation. I'm doing this on my Dell laptop, as you can see from the screen. Apologies for the slightly poor quality of the screen. I was obviously recording this via my camcorder since I'm installing this onto a physical machine rather than a virtual machine. Now, NetBSD is actually optimized uh, to be installed on uh, QEMU. Uh, virtual devices and also other virtual devices too and NetBSD can be found being used all over the place in all kinds of systems from firewalls, routers to security cameras and lots lots more. It can be found all over the place. You just don't realize it's there apparently. Um, However, I wanted to give NetBSD a go. Obviously, if you watch my channel, you will know that I use FreeBSD at home and I use that as my main uh, operating system, as well as another laptop that is uh, what I use uh, Linux on as well. And this channel is about uh, reviewing those uh, operating systems that are out there and distributions that are out there uh, that you can basically renew your old hardware and make like you've got a new machine with old hardware essentially because a lot of these operating systems and distributions really can give your old hardware a new feel. Now if you uh, if you've been paying attention uh, to the screen and not listening too much to me blabbering on, uh, you will see that we are now at the root password stage and I haven't speeded things up. This really is as quick as the installation goes. And as you can see right now, uh, I'm uh, configuring my network interface. It's very straightforward. At this point, you can also configure your wireless interface and I've got to say the uh, networking part of NetBSD uh, really does uh, detect quite well on my uh, D Dell laptop here. So I'm just going to give it a host name, NetBSD10, and uh, put in my uh, domain name for my test machines. Okay, and then I'm going to set the time zone. It's all really quite straightforward, and if you've ever uh, installed Linux or FreeBSD or any other kind of operating system, this will likely be fairly familiar. What I will point out and something that I missed when I first installed NetBSD is this installation, the installation of PKGin. Now, if you're a FreeBSD user, then you'll be used to using PKG to install your packages. And PKGin really is uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, I quite like the thought of PKGin. I know it's package in, but uh, I, I kind of call it PKGin because it makes me think of gin. Um, not that I'm an alcoholic or anything. Anyhow, uh, so cracking on with the installation now, I having put all those settings in. Um, hopefully I haven't whizzed to through that uh, too fast. If I have, obviously you can rewind the YouTube video and play it back at slow speed if you need to, um, just to, uh, if you are following along and installing uh, NetBSD. Now obviously this is a BS, this, is, this NetBSD is a beta, uh, a beta product. And um, if you look at the NetBSD install page for uh, NetBSD 10 beta, you will find out that it has been three years in development. The current stable version of NetBSD is 9.3. Now I have actually installed uh, NetBSD 9.3 on this Dell as well and uh, it was quite a pleasant experience aside from one issue and we will get to that 
later on in the video. Right, so as you can see, uh, all the additional items have uh, been uh, set up. I'm just setting up my username here. Um, it's quite nice that it asks you, rather than just asking you the groups uh, you want to add it to, that it actually asks you, do you want to add this to the wheel, op wheel group? And, and obviously to be a member of the wheel group in BSD uh, means that you are able to have a certain level of uh, admin privilege over your operating system when you log in as that user. Right, so it goes off and does a little bit more installation and pretty much here I can now reboot the computer and that is the installation done. So a very speedy installation indeed on the Dell here and this is the BIOS boots screen that you will see and uh, very shortly we will be at the login screen for NetBSD. So it's going to whiz through uh, starting up the running configuration, the RC, and uh, that won't take too long at all. As you can see, I've only configured the Ethernet interface because I've got a uh, network cable uh, plugged into the back of this Dell. And I'm just going to uh, log in here. There we go. All right, and uh, this is the welcome screen to NetBSD 10. And uh, just to prove it, we'll just uh, type uname dash R, and there you go. You can see it is 10.0 beta. All right, so now I'm just going through uh, some of the installation. And um, as you can see, I can't type at all. <laughs> um, I'm running PKGIN uh, update or PKG in update and um, because I've just installed this and obviously this is 10.0 uh, beta there are no updates to download at this stage alright so now I am gonna do a search of the uh, repositories just searching for XFCE which is gonna be the desktop environment I install on here in this case and as you can see, XFCE4 is indeed there. So we will install that. But before we do that, let's just see what happens when we type start X. And look at that. So NetBSD, and this is the same for 9.3 as well, comes with a, uh, a desktop already installed or a window manager already installed. And in it, this case, it's CDM. And very nice it is too. I can only apologize for the quality of the screen there. Uh, it will get better once I get to the screen recorder part. <laughs> but uh, it was a very bright day and I was battling with the uh, camera to actually uh, actually um, install this um, uh, without it being too blurry for the video. So. All right, so it's going to whiz through and we just skip through that part there. That part actually does take about 10 minutes to install XFCE. All right, so I clear the clear the screen there, as you can see. And, um, and then we are, so we've got XFCE installed. Now we also need to install uh, a few other things. And uh, one of those things is uh, FAM. Uh, which is the file alteration monitor. Uh, this seems to be specific for uh, NetBSD um, and you do have to enable the FAM uh, daemon as you can see in the description there if you can read that and uh, I will show you how to do that. So I've installed FAM uh, on there and it's FAM 2.7 um, and as you can see, I am now copying uh, rc.d um, slash famd um, and I'm also copying dbus um, from the examples uh, to forward slash etc rc.d and this essentially enables uh, me to uh, start uh, the, these daemons uh, fam and dbus 
on NetBSD and this is kind of an essential part of the configuration of NetBSD if you are going to run a um, window manager or a desktop environment. So you can see there RPC bind is set to yes in the running configuration.conf or rc.conf uh, and dbus uh, is also set to yes uh, in rc.conf and we will also add fam uh, fam d uh, also as yes and this basically means that when uh, netbsd starts up the running configuration will then um, start all those uh, daemons which can be thought of a bit like services in windows right so rather nicely xfce has started and we are in xfce you can see uh, how much memory is being used in xfce by default i've gone ahead and installed neofetch and you can see exactly uh, what is uh, running there at the moment only 362 packages um, and that's with LibreOffice installed as well now uh, in between there I went ahead and installed uh, LibreOffice and a few other packages including Firefox 2 as well uh, not Firefox version 2 <laughs> the repositories aren't that old um, Firefox um, I believe it's 107 actually that uh, it installs and here you can see LibreOffice has also been installed 7.4 so yes these aren't the uh, newest um, the newest packages you're going to get on NetBSD and certainly uh, on FreeBSD the um, repositories supply uh, newer packages however these are stable packages um, so that's that is uh, good to know right when you install Firefox you actually get Firefox nightly as you can see there and we will just take a look at the version just check that I was right yes 107.0.1 .1 is um, the Firefox nightly version there right um, uh, with the htop running in the background there we are just going to take a look at um, average day-to-day -day operations and obviously all of you if you're watching this are going to be watching my techie chap YouTube channel <laughs> Um, and uh, we'll just see what happens with the memory there as you can see it jumps up to 2.01 2 gig however I will say I did have some problems as you can see there dude where's my audio so as you can see from this fairly long post in unitedbsd.com I actually had a quite big issue with NetBSD um, in that the headphones just wouldn't work at all I could get the audio working from the speakers the built-in speakers but the friends at unitedbsd.com actually managed to help me out now as you can see if you can read really small writing um, I was actually running NetBSD 9.3 and when I plugged in a USB Jabra um, speaker with built-in headphones it just didn't detect it at all and my headphones weren't detecting at all and the advice from uh, useful friend pin on United BSD was uh, could I try NetBSD 10 hence the review NetBSD 10 beta obviously um, I, I want to give these systems as good as go good a go as I can um, and so I was quite willing to give NetBSD 10 a go given that is the newest uh, NetBSD and it looks like uh, it's almost ready for release despite uh, being a beta now as you can see um, it actually detected my USB Jabra speaker correctly which yay fantastic um, however to get that working uh, I had to play around with the NetBSD specific tool which is Audio CFG. Now Audio CFG list as you can see there will show you what audio devices you have available and then you do need to set the default device which is done using the, 
the identifier, which is either zero, one or two in my case, as you can see there. And that's how you set the default output device. And indeed you can set the default recording device. So it's not something in NetBSD that seems to be able to be set uh, via a software application or indeed using any uh, built-in XFCE tools. So that's, uh, that, that was one thing that uh, surprised me. So what do I think of NetBSD overall? At least what do I think of NetBSD 10? Well, it's pretty quick. It's certainly usable as a desktop operating system. Um, it installed really well. Um, I think it's it's pretty good. And actually, I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, release candidate and the um, actual NetBSD 10 release is like, because um, I'm sure some of the bugs that I've experienced, including uh, a couple of random crashes here and there, uh, will be ironed out by the time they release this. I mean, three years in development, that is a long time of development for a next release. But I'm sure that it will be a fantastic release when it comes out. So that was my look at NetBSD 10 Beta. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please click on like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.